Hey, how's it going? Any, any engineers? Hooray! Okay, so I actually, I, I realized a little earlier today that FameLab is sort of science's answer to the Eurovision Song Contest. Which probably doesn't bode well for Britain. But um, yeah, so as, as from my introduction, I'm, I'm pretty much sort of a rocket scientist, and so naturally today I'm going to be talking to you about bees. Um, specifically, I actually want to talk to you about how it is that bees fly. This is, this is very interesting. So, to do this, we have to look at how, how an insect moves its wings. So I'm, I'm an insect, and let's just imagine I'm hovering, and I'm there, and I move my wings backwards and forwards, and I stay where I am. And very specifically, actually, the way an insect moves its wings is it brings its wings forward like this, and then it throws them up against the flow, turns its wings back, moves them back, throws them back up against the flow. And it does this over and over and over again in order to hover. And there's a great peculiarity in this, because when it throws its wings into the flow, it actually stalls its wings. Now, Generally speaking, stall is rather bad. Um, when you stall a wing, it stops generating any lift. Pilots don't like this. Uh, lands the plane really quickly. It takes a long time to pick up all of the pieces. And so perhaps it comes as no surprise to anyone in this room then that when they tried to model how insects fly with how airplanes fly, they didn't get a very good answer. And you know, this sort of started this whole idea of, oh, scientists think that bees can't fly. Complete rubbish, right? What it really said was this theory wasn't very good. You couldn't model insect wings in the same way as you could model airplane wings. And the reason for this was because there's a subtlety in stall. See, when you first start a stall, you actually generate more lift. Now, this is fairly academic for an airplane because for a few seconds you fly a lot better and then all the way to the ground you fly a lot worse. <laughs> but a bee is not a plane. See, a plane has fixed wings and you move the whole plane, but the insect stays where it is and flaps its wings. And this allows it to do something very clever. What it can do is it brings its wings forward, starts the stall, gets the boost in lift, and just before the bad bit of stall starts, it stops, turns its wings around and comes back. And it does that over and over and over again. And in doing this, it's capable of generating a lot more lift than an airplane wing. And this is how insects fly. But this is more than just a fun little trinket of knowledge. You can actually do quite a lot with this. You can make helicopters fly better. And for a very long time, this information was classified which is why it took so long to come to the public domain. And this whole area is really interesting, actually. You can do so much research on insects, you can look at all of the other secrets and secret methods that insects use to, to fly and to jump and how they get around and you know, sort of cheap energy costs. And you can look at how you can apply that to our existing technology and to new technology. And you can even look at building giant swarms of flying robot rocket-powered insects. Now, I would love, I really would, I would love to tell you more about that, but they only gave me three minutes, so I will stop now. Thank you. So I was quiet for Croatia, now I have to speak for UK. Um, so I like the way you use your body to simulate both plane and, and uh, insect fly. Uh, you said that this research was classified for a long time. So uh, how far we are from having helicopters who are flying like bees or? Uh, well, they were, the reason it was classified was because you could essentially give a, an edge to your own technology. Um, so I won't go quite into how it works, but essentially you can use, in a similar method, you can sort of start a stall and stop it on the rotor blade as it spins around because it speeds up going one way. If the helicopter's moving in a direction, speeds up and then sort of slows down and it starts these start, start stop stalls. And basically, the army didn't want everyone to know this. So you, this is why you get those sort of square tips on the end of a lot of rotors. You ever seen helicopters with square tips on the end? You know, that's really weird. That's what those are. OK, thanks. And what do you hope to do in the future? Uh, ooh, many things. Uh, I want to continue my research. Um, I love my research. It's great. I also want to get into this sort of insect stuff. I'm sort of toying with the idea of doing this is really strange rocket powered squids. Um, <laughs> it's really hard. Um, <laughs> It's quite fun. Um, and you know, ultimately, if I build a big enough rocket, maybe I'll one day get to space, which would be great fun. Uh, and yeah, that's, 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 all, that's the biggest plan I've got so far. So. <laughs> Just a little plan. Yeah, there. dreaming small, <laughs> dreaming things you know, quaint. OK, suddenly they ran out of time before they asked you about the different laces on the shoes. But can we thank Leon Vanstone, Anagram, No Neat Novels. <laughs>